Chief Prosecutor Olciancella is alarmed that the justice system is in a state of emergency. The U.S. Ambassador called on all prosecutors serving the Albanian justice system to defend the rule of law. The EU Ambassador pledged EU support, saying that 2020 will be crucial for Albania. It's 6 o'clock on Tuesday, the 3rd of March, 2020. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to the English edition of Ora News. My name is Christopher, bringing you the only update of the local Albanian news translated into English. Chief Prosecutor Olcian Cela has alarmed that the justice system in the country is in a state of emergency as a result of overcrowding and vacancies. Appealing for a solution to the situation, he said the elimination of decentralization has created a risk for the defragmentation of the prosecution. U.S. Pro uh, Ambassador Yuri Kim demanded that prosecutors be assured of convicting the perpetrator, while the SPAC leader said the results take time. Increasing the workload of each prosecutor has created an emergency situation as we are in the fourth year of reform. There is still no clear prospect of when the system will function at full capacity. Speaking at the conference on the challenges of the prosecution in the light of justice reform, the chief prosecutor said that the consequences of the pace of the vetting process and the delay in setting up new institu institutions should be addressed. Although the vetting process has not yet reached this quantitative path, the justice authorities are facing significant shortages in human resources due to the magistrate's departure from the transitional reassessment process, while a large proportion of magistrates are still in the process or have not started the process at all. The new situation created by the chief prosecutor has also brought the risk of fragmentation of prosecution in conditions where the centralization of the prosecution body has decreased. The new reports show that the law has created between executive and prosecutors under uncertainties within offices, while there is a risk of defragmentation of investigative activity due to different practices in the absence of a centralized authority. Attending the meeting, U.S. Ambassador Yuri Kim called on all prosecutors to defend the rule of law and bring the perpetrators to justice. SPAC leader Arben Kraya said the results take time, as investigations should be evidence-based. The two OSCE and the EU ambassador, Barshart and Sareka, delivered messages of support for justice reform and the new justice institutions. Like the Prosecutor General's Office, the SPAC has as its main challenge the clearing up of criminal proceeds and assets. Arben Karaya said that the SPAC, by constitution, is an independent institution in decision making, in methodology, and objectiveness. The main challenges have to do with laundering of criminal proceeds and criminal assets and financial crime in general. In these challenges, the Special Prosecution Office sees itself to be the same as the General Prosecutor's Office. Although we are a constitution alley dependent, independent prosecutor, we are independent in decision-making, but not methodological and objectively. We need to coordinate our forces with each other, said Arben Kraya. Regarding the results of the work of the SPAC, Kraya said that the investigation needs time as a decision to be made should be made cautiously so that there will be no further discussions. What I know all people expect is results, but I have to guarantee you something. Some SPAC prosecutors are not only independent and conscientious, this means that when making a decision, it will be a thoughtful and evidence-based decision, and there will be no further discussion. This requires time. We see from the outside that investigations take two to three years to have an effective outcome. I'm not saying that we will reach the history of two to three years, but we will be concrete in due time with concrete results. I guarantee this because you can be all sure that all prosecutors have an objective of their own. What we need to do is to guarantee the conditions to carry out their tasks objectively and independently, said Arben Karaya. The, UN, the U.S. ambassador to our country, Yuri Kim, called on all prosecutors serving in the justice system to defend the rule of law. Speaking about the challenges of the prosecution, the U.S. diplomat said that the reforms Albania is undertaking are important but difficult. As Albania makes these changes, we all understand that the reforms are being undertaken are important but difficult at the same time. Justice reform brought about change, and now is the time for prosecutors to regain public confidence. The establishment of SPAC and BKH is a crucial step that will take a proactive approach to investigating and prosecuting organized crime and corruption. Albania must protect the rule of law. This is not a choice, but a demand. Impunity and corruption must end because these two obstacles are those preventing Albania from becoming as big as it can be. According to Kim, prosecutors should use the right means of justice, 
not to allow culprits to escape the innocent and allow the innocent to suffer. Use the right tools of justice reform. Use your full power to do your best. Don't let the guilty escape and don't let the innocent suffer. Serve your profession with honor and the U.S. will stand by you. Ambassador Yuri Kim called for the fight against corruption and organized crime to continue. EU Ambassador Luigi Soreca is the head of the justice reform. Speaking at the prosecution challenge, Soreca said that this reform is the engine that drives Albania towards European Union membership. Soreka pledged EU support while saying that 2020 will be crucial for Albania. You will have EU support. We will also have a financial investigation project giving you advice from the EU prosecutors. The EU has set aside $34 million for the sustainability of the reform. Albania's justice system and reforms have taught a good lesson that work with hard work and goodwill for the future, much can be achieved. 2020 is crucial for the years to come, and the focus should be on the system to become more efficient. Justice reform is the engine that drives Albania towards EU membership. Referring to the EC report, the ambassador believes that Albania deserves to move forward, hoping for it a positive decision by EU member states to open negotiations. Speaking to the media after a roundtable on electoral reform, DP's Oward Bulikbashi said the united opposition has made its own proposals at the roundtable. Bulikbashi said socialist municipalities at Rama's behest are manipulating electoral rolls by registering fictitious voters. Voters lists are being dramatically manipulated by socialist municipalities at Rama's will to the 800,000 votes needed for the prime minister by registering fictitious voters. Today we clearly understood that the government has no measure to allow voters to vote where they live, nor has it provided citizens with a valid means of identification. Many citizens have their IDs expired and an economic, economic disadvantage will be prevented from voting. Socialist Party Damian Jignuri, on the other hand, responded that these are political considerations and that there are more than enough personalities for ID or passport applications. Jignuri also said that the problem of a voter list is a solved problem. These are the political considerations. From the answers provided by the representatives of the Ministry of Interior, it was stated that the expanded applicative capacities are the largest that have ever been in the territory of Albania. It is said that there are over 170 staff engaged to welcome ID or passport applications. The DP was asked for a figure to come officially. If it is a significant figure, we have enough time to do the necessary incentive campaigns to get IDs. The list problem is now a solved problem. For the first time, it has been accepted that there was no duplication. There is a better address system, and it was said that many addresses in 2013 were 500,000 with undefined codes. This number has already been reduced. One thing important is no one can vote twice in Albania. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening, and be sure to join us again every Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of Our News, thank you and good night.